This video is made possible by North Naperville Autos. If you're looking for a quality used car in the Chicagoland area, North Naperville Autos is here to help. Browse their inventory at NorthNaperVilleAutos.com and drive home in a new vehicle today. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1999 Porsche 911 Carrera. Behind me is a 3.4 liter flat six. Down below is a six speed manual transmission. Now I'm super excited to be driving this here 911 for a couple of reasons. First of all, I have declared 2021 the year of the Porsche. And so, this being a Porsche product, my third Porsche review of this calendar year, of course that's super exciting. But the second reason is because I have never reviewed a 911 before. I've driven them, but never on camera. So, it's exciting to finally get to do so. Let's get back to that flat six all the way behind me. Well, that's what makes this car kind of special. 911s have always been rear-engined. They've always had flat engines, which means the pistons are horizontally opposed and that's part of the charm of it. I'll put the horsepower and torque up on the screen for this here 911. This is a stock vehicle, and so it's making stock power numbers. Like I said, paired to it is a six-speed manual transmission, and so far, so good. The shifter feels a little plasticky, a little loose, and the clutch is a little bit heavier than I would have expected, but it's still not a heavy clutch. But overall, the driving feel I absolutely love. 911s are some of my favorite cars for very obvious reasons. They just handle so well. They felt like they were meant to be driven, not just parked outside of a Whole Foods, which is annoying because you see a fair amount of these cars in that exact scenario. But this is a driver's car, which is so exciting. Last but not least, of course, the 911 is rear wheel drive. However, there were all wheel drive versions of the 911 from this era. You could get a 996 that was all wheel drive designated by the 4S. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have five different gauges. On the far left is my battery voltage. Then I have my speedometer with my odometer down at the bottom. And then of course I get a beautiful center mount tachometer. Absolutely love seeing that in sports cars, a center mount attack. That's what you should be focusing on. And then on the right, I have my coolant temperature and fuel, and then my oil pressure. The steering wheel doesn't actually have any buttons on it, and I really, really like that. It just says Porsche right in the middle, and I love that. However, I do have cruise control on a stalk behind the wheel. To the left of me, of course, this is where I find my ignition, because Porsches have always done this. They put the actual key off to the left. And, of course, I have my headlight switches, parking switches, and things of that nature. On the door, I don't actually have any buttons or anything of the sort. I have a door handle, of course, but that's it. Very slim door card, and that leaves a lot of room for my left knee, which is fantastic and hard for me to find in small sports car vehicles like this. Moving into the center, of course, I have a hazard switch and two climate control vents, and then my climate controls themselves. Pretty standard stuff here. This is very typical of 90s Porsche. I drove a Boxer earlier this year and it's the same story with that. Of course, I do have the stock Porsche radio as well. And on the left is my wipers. And on the right, I have a cigarette lighter. Down below the radio, this is actually just CD storage. I got that wrong in my Boxer review. I thought this is where these CDs would actually play, but this is just CD storage. The CDs don't actually play in here, so if you wanna choose one of your CDs, you gotta pull it out and then put it up into the CD player. Sort of interesting there that they give you specific storage options. Then I have a little cubby below that, and then we're on to the shifter. The shifter is very pronounced, however, I'm not the biggest fan of it. Like I said, it is a little plasticky and just not what I expected from a 911. However, Porsche didn't really have all the money in the world back in the 90s, so that's kind of understandable. Down below the shifter, I have my window switches, which is very interesting, very European to find the window switches down below here. And then I have a very aggressively opening ashtray. I don't know why it's so explosive when it opens, but... Then I do have two dead switches and a center console. The 1999 Porsche 911 Carrera fails the big friggin' bottle test. 
right, so to save us both some time, I'm going to be doing today's sponsor reads, hot lapping the test track in my 2019 Mazda 3 all wheel drive. The first sponsor is Fixed. Fixed is an automotive OBD2 sensor that you plug into your car and it gives you tons of really cool diagnostics. Click the link in the description below and you will get an offer code for my viewers only. You get a bunch of money off. Next is Con Plates. You don't want to stick the plate on the outside of your car? Cool. Stick it out with some suction cups. And last but not least, if you want to sell your car, go to cashforcars.com. Click the link in the description below, get a free quote, and they'll pick up your car in less than 24 hours. Thank you to all the sponsors for making these reviews possible. And that is a lap. Now, the seats are really comfortable. They are leather, and they're pretty plush 90s leather. However, they do have pretty high bolsters. They are sporty seats that really keep you in place, but they're still big guy friendly. I'm fitting just fine in this car, which I can't say about other sports seats. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats, so let's go do a back seat review. Yeah, I don't think I'm fitting back here at all, but it's interesting that the 911 even has back seats. Of course, they get no amenities, and they are deep buckets, but there's no way, no way I'm fitting back there. All right, so we're on the front of the 996, and of course, because the engine's in the back, we get a big storage area up here in the front spare tire right here which is very nice have a couple fluid checks amplifier things like that but the really nice thing is that i get a huge storage compartment up here i really really like that and that is one of the key features of the 911s now we got to talk about the looks now the looks of this here 911 are quite controversial people say that the front end is rather ugly because of the cracked yolk headlights they call it looks like a cracked egg and i have to say that i full-heartedly disagree I think this car looks fantastic. I love the look of it, and I think that's really the nostalgia of it because I grew up with this being the 911. This was the 911. We had a family friend who had one of these 911s, and I had very fond memories of going for a ride in it. It was midnight blue with a tan interior. I loved that car. And so I think this car just naturally has that feeling and appeal for me. And so let's get to my final thoughts on this here 911. The 996 911 is one of my favorite generations of Porsche visually. I love the look of it. It's just so iconic to me. This is the 911. This is the one I grew up with. This is what I aspired to own when I was a kid. And now after driving one, I have to say that they're a lot of fun. They're great handling cars. They look cool. You, you feel cool because you're in a Porsche. But I start to understand why people don't like these. There are some quality control issues in here. There's a lot of plastic, a lot of cost-saving efforts. And I'm, I'm buying a 911. There shouldn't be cost-saving efforts in a 911. That's like trying to cut calories out of a Big Mac. But at the end of the day, if you can get around the plastic and cheap here, cheap there, you're driving a 911. You're driving something that has been a staple of automotive culture for over 60 years. These cars are so iconic that there's really nothing else to say. These are beautiful, cool, iconic vehicles, and I'm so glad I was able to get behind the wheel of one. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to North Naperville Autos. Their information is up on the screen as well as linked in the description below. They are a Carfax certified dealership, and they do offer financing, which is absolutely fantastic. But hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe. Really liked it. Take care, guys.